10 data science, learning path mistakes that you really need to avoid. Uh, I'm doing this because I see some very similar mistakes being made by people who are trying to break into the field. And these mistakes prevent them from landing a job right out of either a degree program or sometimes a boot camp with a little bit of experience behind them. So let me dive right in, take a few minutes to walk through uh, just missteps, things to avoid. And the first one is automatable skills. A lot of boot camps focus solely on skills that can be automated. There's auto ML that can do so much of the data science and machine learning workload that boot camps, many boot camps focus on. You can come out of a boot camp with an entire skill set that is three years old and is quickly being automated. A lot of the data pipeline creation, data wrangling, things like regression, your basic classification problems, your decision trees, clustering, even some basic image recognition, uh, computer vision problems, natural language problems. Those are all, I mean, even time series, some very basic time series problems are being automated. So make sure that the program that you go into doesn't just focus on skills that are easily automated. And if you're wondering what those skills are, check out something like Microsoft's Azure Auto ML or any of Amazon SageMaker is another good one to look at. Look at what they can do and make sure that you're not just learning things that they've checked off and that they're working pretty hard on automating. Second thing is trying to learn everything. Don't do that. What your resume looks like when you try to learn everything is you've got about that much depth of knowledge and it's across a broad, broad spectrum of different capabilities. And immediately a hiring manager looks at your resume and they know you can't do all of that. And you're not ready to contribute to a team because you don't have depth of knowledge in any one given area. So make sure you don't try to learn it all. That's not possible. And if you're looking at job descriptions where they're asking for everything, those aren't real. Those job descriptions are 100% not real, not realistic. They're not reflective of a mature data science team. They would never ask for somebody just out of school that has everything plus 10 years of experience. You know, that's ridiculous. So don't base your career and your learning path around something that's obviously ridiculous. Now, glossing over the foundational concepts, don't do that. I know it's tempting to just dive in, start building right away. But if you do that, you're going to miss so much of what you actually need in order to build customized models, to build reliable models, to get models into production. So many of the capabilities that you can gloss over from the math, stats, the hardcore science, the experimental management and design, and so much more, especially software engineering patterns and practices. That's another huge one. Don't gloss over any of that because it's extremely important. I know you wanna dive in and start building and that's awesome. And I definitely wanna encourage you to do that, but Learn the foundational concepts. Don't gloss over them. Spend the time. It's worth it. Don't ignore real world business cases and real world constraints. Academia, even boot camps, sometimes give you this sunny day scenario where everything's perfect. And that's just not how the real world works. So as you're learning, think about constraints. Ask about constraints. See if you can find people who actually have experience in the field and talk to them about, hey, this is what I'm being taught. How is it in the real world? that's going to give you a wealth of knowledge. So definitely network with some people as you're learning who are in the field and every couple of months, just bounce ideas off of them to understand how what you're learning, it may not be a hundred percent true with what happens in the real world and some of the constraints and the problems that we have in the real world and some of the business cases that we actually solve. I mean, Twitter sentiment analysis, awesome project, but is that real world? Not in the form that it's presented to you in. Most sentiment analysis and text analysis like that is fairly automated. We only do sentiment intent in a more robust way for business reasons and business cases. We want to know how customers are thinking. We want to analyze their behavior. We want to understand some part of the social network and social graph. And that goes way beyond those toy projects that you're going to get. So always be talking to people who are in the field and don't ignore the real business cases, the reason why we do data science and don't ignore a lot of the constraints. You know, a lot of times you have to deal with legacy platforms and that's just one of a hundred different constraints that you can encounter in the real world. So talk to people who do this and see how your education compares with what they actually do and what they run into in the real world. 
reach out to businesses early. I see a lot of students who graduate and then start talking to people in businesses. You have to start as early as you can. Reach out to businesses, see if you can gain some sort of an internship, and if you can't, at least build a relationship with a hiring manager and stay in touch. Spend a lot of, you know, spare hours. If you can find an hour here, hour there, sending out some network, networking requests, doing a little bit of time on social media, publishing some blog posts, any one of those. Get yourself out there and start talking to people who are in businesses early. Start networking in with hiring managers and people who are in charge of campus recruiting programs or who are going to help you get placed into a junior level or entry level role in the field and start early. It's not something that you can do in a month. If you can start a year early, awesome. Do that. It is crucial to your career that you start making these connections now because when you go to get hired, when you graduate from the program, when you're ready to get into the field, you need people in your network who can help you get that first job. You don't want to graduate and then realize you need to build that network. Now, your learning path may feel like a static thing, but if, especially if you're on a multi-year learning path, the field changes fast. So don't look at a long-term learning path, you know, especially if you're in a bachelor's program or a master's program where it's a multi-year program. Don't look at your learning path as something you set at the beginning and then forget about and run on autopilot. Constantly be looking at the field, evaluating different directions that the field is going in and adapt your learning path and your curriculum to make sure that you're learning at the edge of the field, the front end of the field, rather than learning skills that are outdated because you simply didn't change your learning path to suit what businesses actually need. A big part of that, my number seven, is don't ignore research. Read research. I know it's complicated and it doesn't have to be. I've actually got a video series on how to read research and you can do it no matter what your capability level is. But if you ignore research, what ends up happening is you start falling behind a little bit because research, number one, gives you a, gives you a sense of the problems that we grapple with and some of the deeper concepts that we deal with in productizing models. A lot of times it's optimization, improving on existing designs, or even calling out problems with designs that have put forth uh, to solve problems across the field. A lot of research is, hey, well, that was a great idea, but it didn't actually work and here's why. So don't ignore research. Spend some time reading research papers and get good at it because that's how you're going to, the research paper is almost like a tutorial in and of itself. It'll allow you to dive into a particular niche of machine learning and get a really comprehensive understanding of it. But you're also going to be on the leading edge of the machine learning field, which is really important because that's one of the things companies are looking for. So don't ignore research. It's really important to keep track of. So software engineering is different than coding. You can learn how to code, but you have to take software engineering classes because there are patterns and practices that you need to know in order to build reliable, maintainable code and to actually get your model into production in just a best practices framework. So don't confuse the fact that you can write code with the need to understand software engineering and software architecture. So definitely learn software engineering as well as learning to become an excellent coder because the engineering part is what makes what you build productizable and operationalizable. You can actually get it into the real world, into production, and it won't die. That's why software engineering and software architecture is so important. So don't confuse coding with the ability to build reliable software. I see this so much. I know it's hard to choose a domain. It really is. But if you don't pick at least one or two domains that you're going to focus on, you're going to graduate and it's going to be obvious you're not really specialized enough to be ready for a particular domain. You're going to be a generalist and you're going to have a very hard time appealing to any job when you're a generalist. The best way to get that first role is to have one or two domains that you've picked, that you've been following, and that your projects are targeted at. 
Because if your projects are all over the place and the curriculum that you followed is kind of scattered in the generalist way, you leave those programs just unprepared to do work for a particular domain. Because remember, you're not going to get hired to do work on every domain. You're going to get hired to do work probably on one domain application for a company that exists in one domain or maybe even two domains. So make sure you pick a domain, pick something that's interesting to you. I mean, finance, retail, manufacturing is huge, medical is huge. You can pick any one of those fields or uh, there's dozens of them. Look for use cases that interest you and specialize just a little bit by picking one or two domains that you're going to follow and specialize your learning path towards. Otherwise, you'll graduate and no domain is going to want you because you don't have the domain knowledge to work in any of them. Finally, last one, please focus on gaining capabilities, not knowledge. So knowledge is memorization. And I understand a lot of interviews, they focus on memorization questions, which is horrible. It's the worst practice. You can't evaluate talented people by asking them questions that you can memorize the answer to or doing these hacker rank leet code type uh, coding assignments, those are terrible evaluation methods, but they can make you feel like all data science is, is just memorization and it's not. You need to learn and then learn to apply. So you're building capabilities and capabilities are focused on work products. What can you build? What can you produce? And outcomes. I've built something and it does. That's really important. Knowledge of and memorization simply isn't enough. You have to understand what it takes to build a product or build some software artifact, some data science or machine learning artifact, and it has to provide value. There has to be some sort of outcome or impact to the business. And knowledge of all of those skills isn't capable of delivering a work product that delivers some sort of outcome for the business. So forget knowledge of, forget that memorization track, get away from the academic way of thinking and move towards real world, which is focused on building artifacts that drive some sort of tangible business outcome. And you'll be so much more successful. So those are my 10 biggest mistakes and how to avoid them so that your learning path is more successful at the end and landing you a job.